days earlier. Oh! Just a man, though. He had no woman with him. Oh! Oh, they lied to you! They lied to your ass! Told me to remain calm and give him everything I had. It was a setup! You're getting robbed, sir! What's good, my name is Drew Bellier. Welcome back with another video for today, guys. Three disturbing true Airbnb horror stories. We reacted to the first one like a couple months ago. Looks like there's a volume two that just dropped. Airbnbs are clucked up. I always say, if you're gonna go to an Airbnb, do not go by yourself. Obviously, there's certain situations where you have to go by yourself and you better be well equipped and prepared, but I, I do not suggest going to an Airbnb of how clucked up it is. Remember to lock all windows, doors, vents, and lock your locks, haul ass, and grab the Bible. Cause I got mine with me. Oh, shit, let's <laughs> Oh, oh my gosh. Bro, why do you scare me like that? I rent out my South Carolina house on Airbnb whenever I'm not using it. Cool. It's a modest three bedroom, one bathroom house by the beach. Two of the bedrooms are guest rooms, which are accessible to the people renting it. Okay. The master bedroom I keep locked with my clothes and certain belongings in there. That room is for me, and I have to keep my stuff somewhere instead of lugging it back and forth every time I go down there. Hmm. I have a regular lock and then a deadbolt lock on there, so no one's ever getting in there unless they chop the door down or break through the window. But Smart. also, it's not like I keep anything super expensive in there, mainly just clothing. This was early last spring. It was still chilly up in Massachusetts where I live most of the year. I wanted to take a drive down to my South Carolina house for the week. Okay. For the most part, I work remotely, so luckily I'm able to do this when I want to. Awesome. Ordinarily, I'd have my usual cleaning lady come and clean the house after each guest leaves. Mm. The cost of her service is baked into the price of the rental on Airbnb. But since I was going down right after the current renter would leave, I just pocketed the cleaning lady money and planned on going down to clean it myself. Wow. The last renter was a guy named Ramon. Through our messages, he told me he was renting with his fiance and asked for good restaurants to eat at in the area. He seemed trustworthy. I always prefer to rent to couples or smaller groups of women as opposed to groups of young men because they're usually the ones to come and get shit-faced and potentially damage the place. <laughs> Facts. I started my drive very <laughs> early in the morning. It was about a 16-hour drive, stopping only for a quick bite and to use the bathroom. 16-hour drive? Holy, I'm taking the plane, what? By the time I got to the house, it was about 10 o'clock at night. What? I went to unlock and open the front door first, before going back to my car to grab my bags and go inside. Cool. I was shot from driving. I didn't even bother checking the place out or anything for a mess. I just went straight to my bedroom door to unlock it. I collapsed into the bed without brushing my teeth or anything. For those that haven't done it, a 16 hour straight drive will absolutely kill you. I crawled under the covers, and I was out like a baby in a matter of minutes. You'd think I'd have slept through the night, but no, I woke up in a black room. Okay. The clock next to my bed read 11.30 p.m. Okay. I had only been asleep for a little more than an hour. Something woke me up. Who woke you up? I grabbed my phone to check for any texts out of habit. Then I turned on the bedside lamp. I looked around the room, then got up and went out to the living room. What the heck going on? I took this moment to start analyzing the place. Yeah. I didn't notice a single thing moved. Not a pillow, not a can of beer, nothing. I went to the bedrooms. Both were void of any people, though the covers on a bed in one of the rooms seemed to have been moved. So yes, they did come. I thought they may have been the cleanest couple to have ever stayed in my place. I have a camera set up on the front porch of the house. I never really think to check it unless a customer is giving me any kind of hard time, but okay. I was curious. I opened the app to the camera system on my phone and went to the movement history. It picked up on a man entering the house via the code lock three days earlier. Oh! Just a man, though. He had no woman with him. Oh! Oh, they lied to you! They lied to your ass! Oh my gosh, he lied! He lied to you! It was only him and him alone, so he can come and kill you! It's about to go down. Slaughter you! I checked for any other movement updates from then until the moment I showed up, which it also caught on video. Yep. There was nothing. I checked it over like five times. Oh. I suddenly got the chills. Damn. I went to the Airbnb app to message Ramon. Hot ass. It checked out okay, even though it was late at night. I went to check the bedroom where I presumed he slept in. I started checking under the bed and in the closets. Yo, where's your I was weapon? Yanking the closet doors open as if I were ripping off a band-aid. Where's your Bible? Each time I was greeted with an empty closet. 
I moved along to the second guest bedroom. Both twin beds in here were still neat and untouched. As I yanked open the last closet he could have been in, I saw that it was empty. I sat on one of the beds for a second to just stare at the conversation between Ramon and I. That's when I heard the master bedroom door click shut, quietly, in a way that a person would have done it, not a draft. I went out to the living room and looked at the master bedroom door. I said, Ramon, are you still in here? With a shake in my voice, no response. In the sh bro, you're scared? Why are you still in the house? Like what? Grab your Bible, grab your blicky, and leave. Haul ass, what are you doing? Like what? I got on all fours to look under the crack of the door, and I fell backwards when I saw two feet standing not far behind the door, maybe Whoa! a couple feet away. I went to the knife holder in the kitchen planning to grab the biggest carving knife, and it was already taken. By this point, my only logical option was to leave the house and call Run! 911. And that's what I did. I waited out front until the police showed up. Then as we went inside, there was Ramon, waiting in the living room, no knife in hand. He spoke in this Portuguese accent, acting all innocent. What? Said he just needed a place to stay for one more night, which what? was complete bullshit. He denied ever picking up the knife, which was conveniently placed back in the knife holder now. Oh, of course. After 30 minutes of two police officers outside talking to Ramon and two inside talking to me, they actually let him go. What? Him this is what I'm saying. These corrupted, stupid police officers. You're a victim. Oh, mm. These corrupted, idiotic police officers. These useless ass police officers. What in the world? I had someone break into my home and stay a couple extra nights without my permission. He gets arrested and then he's let off the hook? And not throwing away the key? Like, come on, bro. Yeah, I should contact Airbnb and try to work it out with them. Really? I was just shocked. I bro, like what a waste you. do their job. After everyone left, I changed the lock code on the door and I contacted Airbnb about what happened. Though I didn't receive payment for the extra day Ramon squatted in my house, they did apparently ban him from ever using the app again. Yeah, right. It doesn't really feel like proper justice, though, when he was potentially waiting to stab me in my own house. Yeah. In my own bedroom. That's clucked. I'm 26 years old, still living with my parents. I'm not content with my job, and I'm in a relationship that I'm not too sure about. <laughs> oh my goodness! The first three seconds of him talking, I can tell his life sucks. <laughs> oh my god! I'm 26 and I live with my parents. The way Mr. Nightmare said that in the most depressing way possible. It's okay if you're 26 and you're living with your parents, bro. Do you not see inflation? Getting a home, getting a place is freaking like really tough. I, I do not mind. And then this man just said, I'm not really intent with my job. My job sucks. And then he said, I'm, I'm in a relationship that I don't really know about. <laughs> like, come on. 26 years old, still living with my parents. I'm not content with my job, and I'm in a relationship that I'm not too sure about. Bruh. To say I've been stressed would be a monumental understatement. <laughs> my mom and I were not getting along one week, and everyone was just bothering me. Mm. I wanted to escape for a weekend. I looked into little one-bedroom Airbnbs up in the mountains, and found one for cheap. It was in Troutdale, Virginia, a couple hours away from us. Virginia? Based on the pictures, it was this nice, private, and peaceful looking look in the middle of nowhere so when someone clucks you up no one's saving you no one will hear your screams you just signed your own death note victim oh, it was the fall too so the foliage was going to be beautiful i told my parents i was going there for the weekend my mom seemed overly happy about me leaving for the weekends <laughs> my girlfriend was more so just confused finding it weird and suspicious that i was going away to some random cabin in the woods alone for a weekend yeah you're not taking your girl friday came I packed a backpack full of clothes, toiletries, and my laptop, and I headed out for the road. It was around a two and a half hour drive door to door. The area of Troutville was very quiet and scenic. It was a perfect escape from suburbia back home. Troutville, man, it sounds I like Cluckville. a nice weekend just to spend to myself. Sounds like Cluckville. I was driving up a gravel road when my GPS <laughs> told me I arrived. I saw an opening in the trees next to the road. Mm. The instructions the owner of the Airbnb gave me were to cut through this opening onto the grass and up the little hill. Bruh. I did exactly this. Heck. There I saw the cute little house sitting at the top of the hill. The second I stepped out of the car, I inhaled the fresh rural air, instantly feeling happy I did this. The owner told me where to find the key to the front door. I let myself in and checked the place out. 
It was a nice cozy living room, small kitchen, bathroom, and one loft bedroom that you had to climb a ladder-like stairway to get up into. What there in was the a world? circular window over the bed. Lots of light got into the house, which was nice. I went out to walk some of the trails the owner told me about, about a five minute drive away. On the drive back to the house afterwards. You see how he kept on saying that what the owner told me about? The owner told me to do this. The owner told me to get the keys from here. The owner told me about the trail. The owner is the one that's stalking your ass. Do you not understand that, bro? The owner is the one that's stalking you and waiting for the right moment to feast on its prey. You about to get clucked. It's facts! It's facts! These are not facts. These facts are not facts. I noticed these two guys walking down the gravel road. And as my car was passing, they literally stopped in their tracks to turn and look at me as I passed. I waved and smiled, thinking they were friendly locals, but they didn't wave back. Wow! It was completely off-putting. They looked at me as if my driving down the road was a crime. Yeah, it's close. I didn't look back. I turned into the entrance of the property and back up the hill. Bro, that's already signs. I started reading one of the books I brought with me in the living room with the fireplace going. Multiple red flags. It was incredibly cozy. The <sighs> sun was on its way down, and after reading a chapter of my book, I realized I was getting hungry. I went outside to my car, about to drive to the nearest Walmart, when I noticed two men kind of running into the woods down the hill by the entrance of the property. What the heck? Probably in response to seeing me come outside. I wondered if it was those two guys from the road earlier. It was incredibly strange. I suddenly decided to take my laptop and backpack with me in the car while I was gone just to be safe. On the drive into town, I messaged the owner letting him know about this. He replied saying it's nothing to be alarmed about. There's a lot of teens in the area that walk around. So I dismissed it. I drove like 20 minutes Liar. to the closest Walmart since there were literally no grocery stores in the area. I picked up a few food items to hold me over. Some milk, granola bars, fruit, frozen dinners, bread, and cold cuts. By the time I got back to the Airbnb, it was completely pitch black out. There were no street lights on these gravelly roads. Of course With there's no not. neighboring houses, truly the only light was from my headlights. It was creepy for sure. I pulled up to the hill to the little house. It was almost hard to find in the dark. I grabbed my backpack and the grocery bag and went up to the house in the dark, using my Bruh. phone's flashlight to see. Once inside, I locked the door immediately. It was creepy out there. I ate real quick and went back to read again. You locked your door, good job. But did you lock your window? Did you lock the vent? Did you lock every single, did you close the blinds? We shall see, we shall see. My book by the fire and pretty soon the lights to the room suddenly cut out, and the only light in the entire house was from the fireplace. Wow. I tried flicking on anything electric, but the oh, you're was clucked. gone. I went to message the owner again, who swiftly replied back to check the main breaker in the circuit box outside by the telephone pole near the back of the house. I didn't reply. There was no way in hell I was going out there. I was already paranoid from earlier. Bruh. And why would the power be randomly cut out anyway? Because someone turned off. it off. I heard a creak in the floorboard from the darkest corner of the room by the bathroom door. What the frick? I looked over and saw this tall, looming figure in the doorway of the bathroom, lit up only by the fireplace. My worst fear had been realized. This was actually happening. A soft yet deep and disturbing voice told me to remain calm and give him everything I had. It was a setup! You're getting robbed, sir. Congratulations. You played yourself. <laughs> You got me. <laughs> scared I could barely speak. I said all I had was my laptop and some clothes. He told me to empty my wallet of all my money, which I did. As he stood in the doorway, I still couldn't see his face. He told me to go into the kitchen and stay there. Moments later, I heard the door to the house close. I looked into the living room. And my laptop, backpack, and money was all gone. Yep. I called 911 quietly to report a robbery. 20 minutes later, an officer arrived. 20 he minutes? described the two guys I'd seen walking down the street earlier that day, assuming it was them working together on this. Basically, all the officer could tell me was that they'd be on the lookout for anyone matching those descriptions. Bruh, these police officers are so useless. I messaged the owner to tell him what happened, and he was sympathetic at first, or so it seemed. He said I could go home the next day but he didn't want to refund me for my horrible experience. What? A trip I thought would be a nice detox for a stressful point in my life only made it worse. Luckily, my laptop was only like 400 bucks, and I didn't pack any expensive clothing, but it was still the scariest experience of my life. 
there is a small part of me that believes the Airbnb host may have something to do with it. Definitely. I still have no idea how that guy got into the house. Definitely. Definitely. They're in cahoots. The heck? So a few years back, after some friends and I graduated high school, we celebrated in the White Mountains National Forest Reserve. Mm. We only lived two or so hours away, so it wasn't much of a hike. We all packed inside my friend Alexis's car. Also with us was my friend Rob, his girlfriend Stephanie, and our friend Kelly. Alexis's car was a Hyundai Accent, so a very small vehicle. We didn't pack much. We were headed to this Airbnb in Carroll, New Hampshire at the height of the summer. Actual picture of the Airbnb, wow. That looks like a clucked up place, bro. It was a gorgeous drive. Once we got to the house, it was just as depicted in the photos. Only the pictures didn't include the shambling looking shed next to the house. Yo, it like that's it clucked. Years. I My probably goodness. could have knocked it down myself. Alexis joked around that maybe some old crazy guy lived in there. Probably. The place was so cheap. But we all laughed it off and unpacked our things. Heck no. I'll be honest. I was really into Alexis. And I think she was into me. On uh. account that she said we should share a bed. Ah, uh, of course. You, you, you bypass all your red flags. You saw the Airbnb. You saw it was clucked. You saw the freaking little ass a shed. Fucked up. Red flag. Bypassed all of that because you're into your wife, bro. Or to your girl, bro. I was into you. She was into me. We were sharing a bed. Yeah, I clapped cheeks. Was it all worth it, bro? Is it all worth it to clap cheeks knowing the fact that you about to get clapped up by a man? An old man or a young... It doesn't matter. Does it really matter? You're clapping cheeks like this and all of a sudden you hear... Sh you hear the door rumbling. Come on, bro. Be aware. More so because the third bedroom had two doors leading to the outside and had a perfect view of that old shed. Lock so the didn't door. didn't sleep there. And she wouldn't Lock. let me. Lock the we door. We both put our things in the living room and made the pull-out couch our bed. Not much happened the first night. A little later, we all sat in the hot tub in the garage slash rec room. Nice. Alexis sat next to me, and we faced the woods, while Rob and his girlfriend were opposite of us. Okay. Rob's girlfriend couldn't step completely into the water on account of the stitches she just got. Mm. Stephanie and I were always good friends and carried on with stories and joked about high school, sipping on our potentially illegally acquired booze. Oh, illegal. Kelly, on the other hand, was changing and not with us. <laughs> Rob kicked my leg from under the water and winked, seeing how close Alexis was getting to me. But that ah, wasn't too much of a deal. Don't fall for we it. We tried to plan out our next day and talked about hiking to Mount Washington and the Flume Gorge. After a good soak, I eased into bed with Alexis and we watched Rick and Morty for a while. Bro, you better be fully aware what the frick's about to happen. Until the clock struck 2 a.m. and we sat outside. The stargazing here was supposed to be amazing. And a bit later, Kelly tagged along with us. What happened next was hard to explain. In front of the house was this huge deck that we were sitting on. Okay. It was pitch black and no cars were around. Okay. More or less, we were in the middle of nowhere. No one really understands true silence, until you're away from cars or planes for that matter. Facts. The sky was brightly lit, purple, blue, full of stars. Kelly hushed me one time. Just a few feet away from the porch, she heard some crunching, as if something was approaching the deck. There was definitely something walking out there. What the heck? I waved it off as a raccoon or fox. This is our Airbnb. So the sounded heavy, and I looked at Alexis. The fear began to set in as I noticed her gaze was looking towards the old shed. Yo, the get inside the house. Again. Get inside. Quickly, I ushered the girls into the cabin and locked all the doors. Thank I tried God. to explain to them that it's still possibly an animal, especially no. if animals had taken over that old shed. Easily, both of them calmed down. Kelly walked back into her room, and I again laid down beside Alexis. The next morning, I woke up to Rob and his girlfriend cooking breakfast in the kitchen which was just across the room from Alexis and I. Okay. We had a big day planned out, and we did quite a lot of hiking, with most of us forgetting what had transpired last night, okay. other than Alexis. When we came back from hiking, Alexis suggested exploring the old shed that was beside the house. No! Nope. Now that it was daylight, nothing that bad could happen, right? No! But I'll be honest, I didn't want to, but I didn't- Do they not know you can get clucked up in the day or the night? 
Night is just more easier because there's less risk. More cluckness arises. You know, so less people can see the cluckness. It doesn't matter, bro. If it's day or night, you can still get clucked. It doesn't matter. You should be aware a hundred percent of the time, bro. Come on. I didn't want Alexis to think I was a wuss. Of course. You the screen door. You wanted to show off room. against your freaking future there was wife. An old rickety rocking chair. It seemed it might break if I tried to sit in it. What? The next door had one of those brass doorknobs, but it was rusted and dented. I looked at Alexis before grabbing the door, and she groaned as she opened the door. There wasn't much to the room. The floor was dirt. There was dirt caked windows and some trash on the floor. Alexis made a point that it smelt of cigarette smoke. It may have been the designated smoking spot in the Airbnb. Mm. We both shrugged it off and joined the others out back. Rob was starting a fire. Some typical conversation was going on. Rob poked fun at Alexis and I. The sun set and I turned off the floodlight out back to make the ambiance of the fire nicer. The that happened? Some chuckles and stories are passed around. Rob and I boasting about our feats and whatnot. Then there grows a silence. That same crunching from last Here we night go, bro. behind us. You think that's still an animal? The tree line, except it was faster and headed in our direction. Oh! And just like that, there was a flash of green light lighting up the entirety of the backyard for just a moment. What the heck? Whatever was running towards us halted, but my thoughts were ruptured by Stephanie's screams as she what bolted the frick? towards the house. Behind us, a blood-curdling cry or yelp was heard, a deafening sound that at first we thought was a siren. What the heck? I instantly stood up, yelling for everyone to get inside. Stephanie must have saw whatever it was that made that cry. In my bolt, I accidentally knocked over Kelly, who hadn't gathered the entire scene yet. Oh, wow. I turned around to help her up. Rob was already halfway to the house. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about! That's why he's the MVP! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Rob, Rob was like... <laughs> Rob was like, hey, yo, every man for themselves. <laughs> Get the heck out of here! Get out of my way! Heck yeah! Rob got the right idea. Exactly what I would do. I do not care. Every man for themselves. You get clucked up in that freaking uh, area in the woods or whatever. That's on to you, bro. I'll call. I'll tell the police what happened. I was there for my own safety and my own safety only. Okay. The Last frick. thing we wanted if it was a bear for them to stay any longer. After that, I rushed Alexis to the back door where Rob was waiting for us with some kind of bear spray. What? I already at this point had my buoy Rob. out. I commanded him to go in, but he Ain't yelled no at bear. me to go in because he's got the range. The two of us saw this black mass walking along the outskirts of our fire. Whoa. We didn't stay long enough to find out what it was. After meeting the girls in the living room, we called the police immediately. The officer reported to the house and looked all around with his flashlight, finding nothing. He clarified to us that the flash was due to lightning striking a nearby power line or transformer. Nah. As for the thing, he said it was likely a fisher cat or something. But Stephanie said that she saw a man, hunched a over, man. with a cloak or blanket hung over him. Wow. Least to say, we didn't stay the next night over. Yep. The sheer paranoia of someone or something stalking us in the woods was reason enough. To say the least, we haven't returned to the mountains since. Who knows what's crawling around in those woods. Clucked. Clucked. That is absolutely clucked. This is what I'm trying to say, bro. Y'all thought I was playing when I said, don't join these Airbnbs. Y'all thought I was just joking around, just making the video. This is what happens. If you're not, like, there was two men, two girls, they almost got clucked up. Bro, if there are not about 10 to 15 men going to this Airbnb and about at least, let's say, five chicks, I'm not going. You got me all the way clocked up. What the heck? They forgot to bring their Bible too. What, what are we talking about? Okay, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. Let's see if we can aim for 50 likes on this video. I know we can do it. We always hit it. Subscribe to the channel. 100k sub on the way. You feel me? That is the goal for this year. I'll catch you guys later. Take care. Peace. You win. Perfect.